the the, you know, the water after Buddhist prayers and Jewish prayers and Christian prayers and Islamic prayers, you really see this incredible beauty, and they're all different because the languages are different. But if which, you, I'm sorry, go no, ahead. No, 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 go ahead. If you drink water that you know has had good intention, good music played at it, or whatever, and again under Emoto's experiments, let's assume that that water, the crystals look gorgeous. Mm -hmm. If you drink that water, as opposed to let's let's and let's you know put two camps up, the 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 one group that drinks bad water, uh, in terms of you know harsh music, uh, you know you scream at it, you're you know evil. And then the group that drinks the good water, what happens, do you think, between the two individuals? Well, I think the person who drinks the, the blessed water will, be more, will experience more harmony in their body, in their physiology, because the way, for example, our heart is a, an electromagnetic instrument, and our brain, you know, we produce actually magnetic waves. So we think of when you put a harmony in your system, Everything else is going to follow. Everything else, the, if the wa water in your body, which let's say it's ordinary tap water, and you put restructured water into your system, hopefully it's going to do the same thing that the teaspoon did the, of holy water to the ordinary tap water. It's going to transform darkness into light. But see, now you look at the, there's actually an obsession in, in even American, you know, culture in, in homeopathic and naturopathic healing as to what is the best way to restructure water. And, and some people are capitalizing and charging enormous amounts of money for water restructuring. And when I went to the sound of the sun, and I realized that in the Hindu Vedas, they say the sound of the sun, no, sorry, the sound of Om, whoever discovers it, accomplishes everything and anything. And the sound of the sun is the true sound of Om. So now I have this sound in my possession from NASA's files, and I, I transfer it into into my you know recording programs, and I look you look at Dante Alighieri. This is another amazing case where Dante is traveling out of body in the Paradiso, and he he visits the sun, and he sees that the sun is writing the will of heaven, paradise on the earth. So that means there must be information in the sun that is truly the master of the solar system and the master restructure. And, one, and early experimenters have also discovered that whenever you find water that's in the presence of sunlight bouncing off of stones and spinning down streams, when you examine this water under the microscope, it has not only incredible symmetry and structure, but its energetics when tested by Konstantin Korotkov on his new you know, super aura camera. The energetics of the water is, is so much higher than ordinary tap water in America and even bottled water that it renders it pretty much useless. But now I sent the sun, the sound of the sun, to the producer of Water the Great Mystery, Saida Medvedeva, and last, um, it was Valentine's Day, February 14th, I get this call. The researchers are astounded, David, they're telling me. They've never seen anything. They've never seen water restructured to this level of absolute perfection. And if you go on you know, your website at Coast to Coast AM, you'll actually see the photograph that Leonid Ezvakov and his partner photographed after exposing water to the sacred sound of the sun. And it is so incredible. When I got the photograph, and they just gave it to me recently, and the energetics data, which apparently was off the chart, there was, no, there was no technology, there was no system known to, to humanity that could restructure water to the level that this sound could do. And when you look at it, the architectures of the crystalline structures are so perfect. And so there's 12 spokes coming out of the middle of the architecture, which corresponds to the 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night. There's, there's actually a 24 numerical value in the crystalline structure, and there's a six-pointed star. So you see the sun is reflecting mathematics in all of the geometries of how we understand time. There's two sets of 12, 24 hours in a day. So you'll see six, 12, and 24, um, and I actually wrote a paper about this. And you look at, there's, you look at what that means. What do those three numbers mean? Well, we, we have 60 seconds in a minute and 60 minutes in an hour. We have 12 hours in a day, and then we have 12 hours at night. And you're seeing that in the architecture and of, of the water 
that has been exposed to the sound of the sun. And what's amazing is the sun is hydrogen and oxygen and helium, and it's sending its message to a droplet of water, which is made of the same, basically the same substance. And it's reflecting in it a structure that tells me something. You know, this is, this is after years and years of watching the frustration of physicists who are conducting experiments in nuclear fission, for example, at Princeton University, the Tokamak fusion reactor is able to produce temperatures 500 million degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. The sun fuses hydrogen at 27 million degrees Fahrenheit. And the temperature on the surface of the sun is only 6,000 degrees Celsius, 11,000 Fahrenheit. So how is the sun fusing hydrogen at such a low temperature when actually <clears throat> the, the type of fusion that I was an associate of, which was helium-3 fusion, headed by Bogdan Maglitz, and we had signatures from people in Nobel Prize winners like Murray Gelman and Norman Rostocker and, and Glenn Seaborg, who chaired the Atomic Energy Commission. I was around all these people. We were working on this, you know, trying to get funding, further funding for fusion. And we were producing temperatures in, in Maglitz's, Bogdan Maglitz's reactor. He's an MIT, you know, Ph.D. from mm -hmm. Yugoslavia of 10 billion degrees. And while the temperatures were so ultra hot, we, it seemed like we were making progress, but nobody had gone beyond break even. So the question was, why was the sun able to do it with such a small temperature of only 27 million degrees? I mean, we're way past that at Princeton. And the answer appears to be in the structuring of how the sound waves in the sun, which are being studied at NASA right now, are structuring hydrogen in these groups in different frequencies. And because they're in different frequencies, I believe, and the sun has myriads of frequencies, they're able to blend together because higher frequencies can enter low frequency waveforms or pass right through them. So the idea of nuclear fusion is to overcome the repulsive magnetic force of atoms, just like two ends of a magnet. When you push two positives together, they push away. And heat breaks down magnetic fields, but heat alone is not it. It's not enough. There's something else missing. And so when I wrote this paper that maybe it's the sound of the sun that is, that is the secret. Now, you look at right. this right. is really exciting because you look at our planet Jupiter. Jupiter is made of the same stuff. It's 90% hydrogen, 10% helium. The sun is, it's, uh, I just have it here in front of me, it's pretty much the same. I mean, the numbers are just slightly different. The numbers are different, but it's a same. 92% hydrogen and 7.8% helium. So why is the sun producing light and fusion and, and, and Jupiter isn't? And I think the answer is not in is the temperature correct, is the, is, are the elements correct. It has to do with the waveforms, the structure. And if we study this enough, if enough and, and I actually passed this idea, and I wrote a little paper on it. And in fact, NASA has a, has a whole new discovery in studying the sound waves of the sun. I sent this paper to you know, my friend Boyd Bushman at Lockheed Martin. And I, in fact, Lockheed is actually one of the, the, has one of the solar labs that's researching this in the sound of the sun. And I sent this paper everywhere because I really believe that, and I did get a positive response. I got a response that said, we need to pursue this. This sounds very interesting. And here's the problem. Here we are. We're at, we're at an age where oil prices are, are astronomically high. Oil is definitely polluting our environment. Whether you believe it's contributing to global warming or not, that's that's a debate for some people. It's not for me. But still, it's you know we have oil spills. It's polluting our our air. It's polluting our our waters with oil spills. Well, and it's polluting our politics. Too. And it's polluting our politics. So if if we have if we if we reorient ourselves. And we look at, you know, what, what is the real problem here in fusion? We, we failed. We, we tried this. We, we came close with cold fusion. We came close with Tokamak. And our helium-3 reactor came amazingly close with $27 million of funding. If we see what, uh, what the, the legacy that Masaru Emoto has given birth to and all the great scientists that are, that are working towards this, could it be that the missing link to fusion is structure, is consciousness, is waveform? And I believe it is, and I believe it needs to be researched. Now, when you apply the same, when you apply the same frequency of the sound of the sun on water for healing the body, because now mm -hmm. we're coming all the way back to another water. Because here we are. We're how, what's the human?